the loaned engines. Dear viewers, do you remember 87546 and 9462, the two blue tender engines from the first three illustrations of the three railway engines? Well, they happen to be background engines without names inserted into earlier railway series volumes by William Middleton and C. Reginald Dalby. In 1963, a young reader from New Zealand named Ross wrote to the Reverend W. Audrey asking who they were and if they were featured in other stories. However, Audrey invented an explanation that they were rude engines on trial who were quickly sent away, hence why they did not feature in any other stories. While many fans invented their own theories of how they were sent away, what they were based off of, and what their wheel arrangements are, these stories will cover it all. The Author Spiteful Gesture Written by Mainland Studios, adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. It had been a few weeks since Edward had taken his first passenger train, and Gordon got stuck on a hill with a goods train. It had been his first day out in a very long time, and almost all the engines had given Edward their full support, especially Gordon. However, two did not. The fat director had bought two blue engines from the mainland to the Northwestern Railway on trial, and they were quite displeased with Edward. They didn't have any names, only numbers. 87546, the LNER Gresley K1, and 9462, the LNER Raven B16. These two engines had a great deal in common. They were both rude and cocky. However, Unlike Gordon, those two engines never seem to know when enough is enough. Hmm, you finally managed to make it out of the station, cackled 9462, as they were back down in the sheds one night. Edward had returned from his passenger run and was feeling quite proud. What a useless engine you are, Edward. I'm sure we'll be hearing plenty of complaints from the passengers tomorrow. Indeed, agreed it's in 546. You must have been running late all day. The others gave the two engines a foul look, but Edward just smiled. Actually, we were right on time. I'm very happy to be useful again, he chuckled. <laughs> he chuckled. Edward knew that as long as he did not let 9462's words bother him, same for 87546, the engines wouldn't berate him for long. And soon enough, not getting any sort of reaction out of Edward, the two big blue bullies drifted off to sleep. As Edward was now working regular on passenger runs, the fat director had extended his timetable to have them run later in the evenings. This now meant Edward Gordon A9462 will be running passenger services all across the island of Sodor. Edward had his doubts, but was determined to work his hardest. Fortunately for him, he ran the loop line to sub Gordon in 9462 ran for the big station at Knapford, at the other end of the line. The weeks passed. Edward felt his trains getting heavier and heavier, or he was getting older and older. The other engines had noticed this and even offered to help, including Gordon. No thank you, panted Edward. You have your own trains to manage. We can't upset the fat director's timetables. Little did he know, 9462 had heard everything and began in to make a plan. Next morning, Edward had arrived at the station at Vickerstown to collect his first passenger train for the day. When he arrived, he only saw he saw that there were no coaches. Thomas must have woken up late again, he thought. He was just about to collect some more when he heard 9462 came whistling and wishing into the platform with Edward's coaches. No need to fret, he said snootily. I'll be taking your train today. You mustn't upset the fat director's timetables. He laughed loudly as the guard blew his whistle and he set off. 
Edward was upset, but he thought it was best he get on with his work. That evening, Edward was backing into his berth as 9462 was boasting loudly, I've proven that I can manage two trains at once. I can, do even, I can even do better with three. Why keep him around when all he does is get in the way? 87546 ag uh, agreed, but the other engines didn't. Edward helped build these rails that you've run on, fumed Thomas. Without them, none of us have a, none of us have a railway to work on. 9462 interjected. Edward is a thing of the past. Us bigger tender engines are faster, stronger, or more up to date than old iron. Or silly tiny little tank engines like you for that matter, added 87546. Thomas felt very hurt, but Edward on the other hand finally gave up. He decided to take a stand against 9462. The next morning, he woke up earlier than usual to collect his coaches and make it to the platform at Vickerstown Station before 9462. The yard was silent, and Edward felt sure that he had beaten 9462. And what do you think you are doing? fussed 9462. Edward tried to sound brave. Collecting my coaches for my passenger train. Hm, I don't think so, 9462 growled. You are nothing but slow and old. You are going to sit in the shed until you are sent away, or even better, scrapped. Before Edward could say another word, 9462 backed down onto his line and coupled to his coaches. Edward's heart sank, but not for long. And just what do you think you are doing? bellowed a familiar voice. It was the fat director. Er, um, collecting my coaches from my train, sir, 9462 replied, trying to look as innocent as he could. From what I've just seen, that is not the case at all. I've had passengers complaining, saying that they were taken to the wrong stations, and furthermore, fellow workers complaining about your treatment to others. 9462, whose face turned white as a ghost. My engines, the fat director went on, work hard and help fellow engines. You have done neither of those. Let me remind you that I've brought you and 87546 here to work here on trial, and I can see that you are not fit for my railway. I should... You shall stay in the sheds till I've decided what to do with you. But until then, I want you to go back to the sheds immediately. 9462 couldn't muster of a response, so he seethed with fury as he sulked back to the sheds. The fact director turned to Edward. You must understand, Edward. You are one of my engines. You might not think so, but you are not alone on this railway. I'm pleased that you tried to take a stand to 9462, but, you ha but if you have any troubles at all, you must come and see me right away. Understand? Yes, sir, said, replied Edward. He could see from his warm smile that the fat director was told everything. He looked across the yard and saw Henry, Gordon, and Thomas smiling back. Now, you have a train to pull. And then after that, I want you to have a nice long rest. As Edward set off, he felt his position on the Fat Director's railway was secure and had no tr more troubles from that day on. That was until 87546. But I mustn't say any more or I shall spoil the next story. A Streak of Blue Written by the Buried Truck Adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. Thomas and Effort gave a splendid effort building the Northwestern Railway in 1915, but they weren't suitable for mainline services. As such, the fat director purchased another engine called Henry in 1922. Although a good sort, 
He was prone to steaming troubles, which caused endless frustration. In 1923, he also purchased Gordon, an LNER Gresley A1 prototype express engine. Due to a lack of funds, other engines were loaned from other railways in the mainland. One of these, known only as 87546, fancied himself as the savior of the line. It had been a couple of days since 9462 was shut in the sheds for bullying Edward. Fret no longer, declared 87546, dragging Henry and his train into the big station at Vickerstown, for I have restored order to our timetable once more. Does he ever tire of all that hot air in his boiler? Thomas remarked to Edward. I'd say you, little one, the big engine beckoned to Thomas. Be a good lackey and take away my coaches in the, ahem, indisposed away. I must rest my aching wheels. Evidently not, evidently not, murmured Edward darkly. As Thomas buffered up, Henry could not even meet his gaze. I'm so sorry, he sighed. He should be sorry, retorted Thomas. One day he'll get his. That night, Thomas retired to the shed at Vickerstown. A vulgar discause greeted him. You know, 87546 boasted loudly to 9462, I do sympathize with the fat director, wasted what little hard-earned money he had on a mite, an antique, and an invalid. He looked across to Henry, sleeping, as the workman tried to mend him. I'm the real bargain, the strength of three for the coal consumption of one. Only a matter of time before he purchased me and 9462 from the LNER. The fat director, Edward interjected, faves his engines with good character. You leave much desire to that department. And where has that good character lead you, hmm? Replied, replied 87546. Certainly not the main line. Speed and strength of all that matters there. When I pull coaches, you merely see a streak of blue. Engines like you fade into the background. I'd like to see you do my work without falling to pieces. He turned, to 94, he turned back to 9462, who agreed. Now of a more pressing matter, when 9462 and I are purchased, what do you think m my proper name shall be? I fancy something regal. Lord Frederick Raggerby has a certain charm to it, no? Thomas was about to retort, but Edward gave him a look. Save your steam, he muttered. It's no use arguing with him, or 9462 for that matter. They stared at the loaned engines with contempt. Henry, on the other hand, who only pretended to sleep, had heard everything and began making a plan. The next morning, 87546 awoke to a startling sight. There was Henry, hissing and wishing halfway on the turntable. What in the world is this? Oh, ho, oh, oh, dear, Henry coughed feebly. Thought the men had made me better. Well, get better and out of my way this instant, growled 87546. My admiring passengers are waiting. I demand extra occasion at once. But the other engines had already left for work, except for 9462, who was, shut in the sh who was still shut in the shed for his recent bullying for Edward. They couldn't have helped anyhow, but there was no way onto the turntable. Worse and worse, and worse the, fat can the fat director scowled worryingly. The passengers cannot be kept waiting. I'm sorry, Edward. As the others are gone, you'll have to take the coaches instead. Edward gulped, staring at the lawn train. Begging your pardon, sir, but this is a bit beyond my capabilities. Not if I can help you, bubbled Thomas, shuffling alongside. Two engines are better than one, sir. Besides, the other engines can manage their own shunting for a while. 
the fat director thought about it and then considered. Very well, he said at last. Off you go. Do your best and take care. The engines backed sightingly onto the train. The passengers marveled at the strange combination, but were thankful to have a train at all. Finally, the signal dropped and the guard blew his whistle. Come on, come on, whistled Thomas. Steady now, steady now, whistled Edward back advisingly. Soon they were on the main line and having a wonderful time. Thomas was so excited to leave the yards at Vickerstown that he nearly pulled Edward's coupling off. Edward just chuckled and smiled. He was glad to stretch his wheels again. The two engines worked so well the coaches felt light as air. Other engines were shocked as they raced past, whistling with glee. Later that day, after reaching the terminus at Knapford, they returned to Vickerstown Station, exhausted but triumphant. Henry and 87546 stood at the platform. Well, 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 smiled Henry. Our streak of blue has returned, and in one piece, no less. 87546 scowled jealously as the happy passengers swarmed out of the coaches and surrounding Thomas and Edward with admiration. What splendid little engines you are! Your controller must be very proud of you. He's very happy with all of his purchases indeed, chuckled. He's very pr happy with all of his purchases indeed, chuckled Thomas cheekingly. Oh, ha, 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 fumed 87546 as he puffed away. You are only allowed out of the yard because clanky old Edward couldn't manage alone. Enjoy your brief moment in the line of light. It's already fading. And he puffed away back, back to the sheds. If I didn't know any better, smirked Thomas, I'd say he didn't like shunting his own train. He chuckled off to the water column, laughing at his own wits. But Edward stayed behind. Are you all right, Henry? He asked. What on earth happened this morning? Oh, the usual steaming troubles, replied Henry. You know how it is. Miraculously, he winked. The problems seem to have vanished after you and Thomas have gone. You didn't, Edward gasped. Now, Edward, Henry grinned, did you really think that I would do such a thing? And without another word, Henry steamed away. Edward just smiled. Trouble with the Express Based on the original story by Tardis 9, adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. Just beyond Gordon's Hill, on the inside line, the curve is significantly tighter than all the others. This makes it very dangerous for all trains to go fast, whether an engine is pulling trucks, coaches, or either one. Most of the engines on the Fat Director's Railway are very careful when going over this particular section of track. They knew it was for their own good. 87546, however, had other ideas. A day passed since Thomas and Edward had filled in for his passenger train. You're all just scared, he scoffed one day. You should try a little record breaking, be a bit more daring like me. Hmm? You, with all your speeding, 87546, should know at least better than tearing around tight corners, Edward argued. Pah! That curve is safe enough for engines to go at a hundred miles per hour. I'm being incredibly foolish, snapped Edward. Agreed, said Gordon. Express engines may be fastest and best, 87546, but our railway, safety, and being our time are our top priorities. Indeed, replied Henry. Hear, hear, said Thomas. 87546 just snorted in disgust as he set off to collect his coaches. The coaches were waiting for him in the yard at Vickerstown. They had heard all about his and 9462's behavior with them, and were not too keen on having them, him taking them out. And they were right not to, for when 87546 arrived in the yard, 
He backed towards them so sharply that he ended up bumping them hard. Oh, 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 they groaned. Watch it, you big brute! But H7546 just took no notice whatsoever. As soon as he was coupled up, he pulled out so sharply that, clang, a coupling broke just in front of the first coach. You silly engine, snapped a shunter. You ripped the coupling clean off. Now I'll have to find a replacement. But 87546 didn't care. He decided best to collect Gordon's coaches for the Express, the Wild Norwester instead. But everyone was still very cross for, at him. Things went worse for 87546 as the journey went on. At the next station at Marin, a signal was broken, so they had to stop to let off passengers anyway. 87546 seethed impatiently at this. We should have ju we should have just gone through. We're late enough already, he moaned to his crew. No one can say we disagree with you, said his driver, who personally wanted to finish the journey, only to get home and away from his disrespectful engine. But it's orders. Pah! You're just a, you're just a goody two-shoes. Too nervous to take a few tiny risks, said H M five four six rudely. We would have made it safely through the whole line if you weren't such a coward. I'd rather be a coward than a reckless piece of scrap, the driver muttered to the fireman, who solemnly agreed with him. Half an hour later, amidst the complaints to the passengers, not held up by 87546's insults, the workmen had finished the signal. By then, some of the passengers had decided they had enough, so they left the express anyway. 87546 grew crosser and crosser at this. When the guard blew his whistle again, he bumped and banged the coaches as they set off. Oh, 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 they screamed. We don't like that. We don't like that. We don't like that. Shut up and get moving, snapped 87546. We're late enough as it is. Every wise engine's nose never to bump coaches or else they would get back at them. Soon, they were climbing Gordon's Hill. When 87546 started to pick up speed, since his train was now half empty, he didn't need a banker as much. As soon as they neared the top, the coaches began the tricks. This is it, thundered the first coach. Let's get him, girls! And banging their buffers, they pushed 87546 down the hill. To make matters worse, they were now on the down line, the same line as the sharp curve on the other side. When 87546 saw the curve ahead of him, he realized his mistake and tried to stop. But by then, it was far too late. Ow, 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 he groaned. Luckily, the driver and fireman jumped clear before the crash. But 87546 laid on his side, looking battered, bruised, and badly damaged. Soon, Ed Edward soon arrived with the breakdown train and moved alongside the wreckage. It was worse than he had thought. He saw a few passengers outside the train looking badly injured, one of whom was being carried on a stretcher. Get the engine's passengers to the last station as fast as you can, ordered the guard. I'll go and telephone for help. Right away, sir responded Edward, and quickly raced away with his coach in tow and the passengers aboard. Thankfully, the fat director wasn't amongst the passengers, but was far from happy for what 87546 had done. This is why I never liked these big engines, he snapped. I would have thought you would have known better than to do something such as stupid as this, 87546. An engine of your size should know better than to go at that than to go that ridiculously fast. Even Gordon knows that. Beca but because of you, sixteen passengers were injured. One of them, the vicar of Wellsworth, seriously. It wasn't my it wasn't my fault, sir. These coaches made me go faster, replied eight seven five four six sulkily. 
Of course we did, snapped the first coach. You bumped us, remember? And your own coaches too, agreed another. You wanted to go fast and just because we were delayed by a broken signal, agreed the third. And we know how you and 9462 are like, finished the fourth. So not only you have put in your passengers in danger, you've also been bumping and banging your coaches about again, yelled the fat director furiously. That's it. I've had it with you, you 87546. As soon as you are mended, you will stay in the shed until we have decided what to do with you. As soon as 87546 was repaired, he returned to the sheds at Vickerstown and stayed there for a very, very long time. He resented the fat director furiously for this. Although he and 9462 would pay the price for their fool for their foolishness for this. End of the line. Based on the original story by Sean Gannon, adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. 9462 and 87546, the loaned engines, were shut in the shed at Vickerstown and still feeling indignant, having been scolded by the fat director severely for bullying Thomas, Edward, and Henry and bumping and banging their passenger trains. They thought they were in the right and constantly criticized him and the other engines for this. I should be pulling express passenger trains, not slow goods trains, complained 9462 one evening. I'm clearly too good for this blasted railway. That makes two of us, agreed 87546. I should be in use, not sit in the shed collecting dust like that relic Edward should be doing. More likely the fat director should retire him or just keep him in the shunting yards like little Thomas, added 9462. Can pull his trains without messing up if you ask me, put in 87546. Is that so? said a familiar voice. It was Henry, who heard the whole conversation. Perhaps you two should try shunting your own trains. Hm, I'd like to see you try, Henry, snorted 87546. Oh, no, 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 I couldn't, boasted Henry, pretending to show off his experimental design. I'm a failed LNER Grizzly A1 prototype, albeit without neck holders and a six-wheel tender, but placed for mixed traffic. And, mi and we mixed traffic engines have no interest in collecting our own trains, goodness knows. Oh, we'll shunt our own trains all right, won't we, 9462, smirked 87546. Oh yes, 87546, replied 9462. First thing in the morning. Little did the two engines know that Henry had made a plan to make them see sense. But it might have been better if they had. <clears throat> They're up to something, Edward said later that night. I just know it. Up to something, snorted Henry. Stuff and nonsense. Those two stuck-ups wouldn't get up early in the morning to fetch their own coal if they run out. I know, replied Edward. Does that catch you off guard at all? Hmm, not really, came the reply. But I wouldn't dwell on it. Good night, Edward. But Edward thought about it for so long, he barely got any sleep. The next morning, 9462 called to the shed master that 87546 was to be let out to look after his goods train. It's the fat director's orders, he explained. He came by last night in a hurry and told me to let you know. I have to look after Gordon's Express the Wild Nor'wester while he is away for repairs. His reversing gear is jammed and it's ironically stuck on reverse, I am told. The Shedmaster, suspecting nothing, agreed to this decision and so it was arranged. By this point, the two blue engines were as good as their word. They set to work collecting their own trains. 9462 collected the coaches for the Express the Wild Nor'wester, while 87546 arranged some trucks for his goods train. At the yards at Vickerstown, 
Thomas was surprised to see 87546's goods train assembled already. But he soon became more confused than surprised when he recognized the actual number on the blue engine's tender. 87546, he said. Aren't you supposed to be in your sheds? I mean, last I heard, you were banned from pulling trains. And should 9462 be collecting these goods? Shorts of engines, Thomas, and 9462 is looking after the express for Gordon, he said quickly, hoping the fact director hadn't heard everything. This was partly true, given Gordon's jammed reversing gear, but Thomas didn't realize that 87546 was lying to him. To make matters worse, what neither engine noticed was that one of the couplings between two of 87546's trucks was loosened. Because of this, was two naughty boys, which are the sons of Henry's driver, who had been sent by the big blue engine himself. Meanwhile, 9462 pulled into the big station at Vickerstown with the express, gloating with pride. Finally, a proper engine on a proper train. That'll show the fact director that I'm a far more suitable for the express than that A1 Gordon. Little did he know that his crew had been called over by the station master to have a meeting with him in his office. It wasn't until only then, when the same boys from earlier jumped onto his footplate and fiddled with his controls. His actual crew hadn't reckoned without the guard's whistle as a result. The boys jumped out just as 9462 pulled away, feeling very pleased with himself. As he pulled, the two boys headed straight back to Henry, who was very pleased. Well done, you two, he grinned. That'll show those two troublesome engines a lesson. And indeed it would. At first, 9462 was enjoying himself enormously. Hurry, 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 he called to his coaches. Easy there, easy there, easy there, the, co the coaches called back. In all honesty, it would have been a spectacular run. But 9462 reckoned without one thing. Presently, he began going faster and faster. He then realized there was no one in his cab. Help! Help! I can't stop! He cried. Far ahead, 87546 was now climbing up Gordon's Hill with his trucks. It wasn't until they were halfway up when the loosened coupling finally gave way with a snap and the last few trucks began running backwards down the hill. Oh no! cried 87546. Back driver! Qu reverse! Quick! Further back, 9462, who was still out of control, suddenly noticed the runaway trucks heading right towards him. Oh no! Cr he cried as he shut his eyes. The crash jerked him violently backwards. Ow! 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 Oh dear! Ow! He groaned. Oh dear! Oh dear, oh dear, groaned 87546 as he backed alongside 9462. Are you alright back there? I think so, choked 9462. Who on earth is responsible for this? He demands, still coughing. That would be me, said a familiar voice. It was Henry, coming into view with the breakdown train in tow. So, 9462, how does it feel being a Top Link Express? The big blue engine's smugness suddenly turned into horrorness by the sight of 9462's passengers. You see, what none of the three engines had noticed was that there was a dining coach in Gordon's Express. Because 9462 had been going at such a dangerous speed, Food and drinks had been spilled all over the place. The passengers were more of a mess than hurt and expressed their complaints to the fat director, telling him what a bad railway it was. That engine of yours! I hope you're going to pay for my spoiled clothes! 
That is the most uncomfortable ride. I didn't come for flying. Give us our money back. Now, everyone, sued the fat director. I'm sure your spoiled clothes will be recovered. He turned to the, loaned, the two loaned engines. As for you two, I shall talk to you later. Henry, he went on, please set to work clean up this mess at once. Yes, sir, sighed Henry. He then realized what he had done. That evening at Vickerstown Sheds, the fat director came to see the three engines. Well, I am absolutely appalled by your behavior during these trials. The other engines told me what you both said and did, and I am not pleased to say the least. But, 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 sir, it, it wasn't, the two engines protested, but it was no use. I am not in the mood to care, the fat director bluntly replied. You've both been rude, spiteful, careless bullies. I do not allow engines with an attitude like that on my railway. But you always assume that the others are so useful, 87546 argued. Yes, sir. Why do they always get to, started 9462. That's enough for the both of you, snapped the fat director. As soon as I can arrange it, you will both return to the LNER in the mainland and never come back. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, the loaned engines replied sulkily. The fact director then turned to Henry. I confess that we're all fed up with the beha their behavior, Henry, but you should know better than to use such antics to get revenge on those two for bullying you. Furthermore, you should have let me arrange for a new engine to look after the Express, the Wild Nor'wester for Gordon, instead of all that had happened today. I am partially disappointed in you. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir, replied Henry sadly. However, finished the fat director, smiling, since we'll be receiving no more of their troublesome antics on my railway, and you've helped clean up the mess, I will commend you for it. So we'll say no more about it. Now then, Henry, can I trust and count on you and the other engines to handle all the trains between you until I can make other arrangements? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir, smiled Henry happily, feeling much better. Later that week, 9462 and 87546 were ready to go back to the mainland in disgrace. Not even Henry came to see them off. How did they get sent away, you may ask? Well, the two blue engines were sent back by, by a ship. They deserved it, don't you?